with rolling smoke of pitch black and flashing sparks and globs of flame that licked the very stars. From the bowels of the mountain torn, huge stones are hurled and melted rocks heaped up, a roaring flood of fire. This is a portion from the poem known simply as Etna, which is a recounting of the famous poet Virgilius's first-hand witnessing of Mount Etna's eruption. And I feel that Virgilius's words work perfectly here in their attempt to capture the sheer power and fear that volcanoes can possess. Yet, I also believe you can attribute these massive magma mountains with the role of creator as much as you can destroyer, and it is these very elements of them which I feel were taken into account when creating the vulgar volcanic visionary viciously vacating vital vicinities, Jogo, the natural disaster cursed spirit. Jogo was one of the major antagonists for the first portion of Jujutsu Kaisen. Being introduced as the pseudo-leader to the natural disaster curses, initially Jogo comes off as a quick-tempered and egotistical creature. Someone who was gifted with extraordinary powers due to his nature as a natural disaster curse, and who deeply values his existence as a cursed spirit. As well, he has an intense hatred for the existence of humanity in their two-faced nature, believing that the only proper future for the world would be one where humans are removed and replaced with other cursed spirits, a goal which he would selflessly pursue, trying with all his might to make his ideal world, even if it would cost him his life in the end. Though before we get too deeply into that, let's understand the meaning behind his name and design. Starting first with his name, as like with most characters in Jujutsu Kaisen, Akatame tends to give them a name that carries with it a specific meaning to their character. Starting first with the first portion of his name, Jo, which comes from the character for to leak or to escape, while the second character of his name, Go, comes from coral or virtuous person, but can sometimes be used to refer to a ceremonial offering of sorts. Though, when combined together, his name can mean leakage, specifically of gases or liquids, but also a leakage of offerings, which not only works well with his volcano-like design and inspiration, but also works with the fact that he is a being born exclusively from the leakage of people's fears directed at volcanoes. But Jogo's design isn't based off of just any ordinary volcano. Instead, it comes from one specifically, this being Mount Fuji. As Mount Fuji is one of Japan's most famous landmarks, even being personified by some as Fujisan. And that same personification could actually play a part in Jogo's own creation. Now, Fujisan is not only a famous site for tourism, but it is also the largest of Japan's three sacred mountains, and has been a place of worship throughout the country's history, with a large number of Shinto shrines being erected both for the mountain, but also to the kami associated with it, that being the goddess Konohana Sakia, who, like Jogo, has a direct association with not only Mount Fuji, but all volcanoes. With her legend speaking of a fiery temper and a fierceness in her actions, from the splitting of the Yasugatake Mountains for even daring to be bigger than her Mount Fuji, to erupting the Kirishima volcanoes and destroying improperly handled shrines, to of course, giving birth within a burning temple to prove her faithfulness to her husband, saying that the flames would only burn her or her children if she wasn't, which all could have been used as inspiration for Jogo's own personality, being someone who was quick to anger but also dedicated and would overflow with magma if he truly felt insulted. She also has a natural connection to the Sakura Blossom from her name to one of the most famous shrines dedicated to her being the Arakura Fuji Sengen, which has an absolutely beautiful view of Mount Fuji during the summertime. As well, her acting as this close connection between volcanoes and nature may explain the close partnership between Jogo and Hanami. Though, you might ask yourself, what inspired Akatame to give Jogo a volcano head to begin with? Well, according to the Mondo Kobayashi interview with the mangaka, the beginning stages of Jogo's design were directly inspired by Mr. Three from the extremely popular One Piece, a character with a candle aesthetic to him, with sometimes the three on Mr. Three's hair being ignited in flame similar to that of a candle wick. This flaming head design was really attractive to Akatame, and thus they wanted to make a character who 
had a flaming head themselves. And this wouldn't be the only time that One Piece would inspire Jujutsu Kaisen in some way, as Nobara Kujasaki's own ability is inspired directly by Basil Hawkins. Though similar to this, other portions of Jogo's design seem to tie directly back to other series, as well as Japanese traditions. Like, for example, his darkened teeth. This seems to be based on a old Japanese practice known as Ohagoru, or the blackening of one's teeth, and it was a tradition as well as a beauty standard popular during the Heine to Edo period. Now, while it was usually performed by married women, it did go on to be picked up amongst some samurai. Now, the way that this was accomplished was by applying an iron-rich powder and vinegar solution to one's teeth. This allowed essentially a black resin to materialize and, and harden around the teeth, as well as staining them a darker color. Now, the exact purpose behind these traditions is sort of hard to find but it seems that it was a combination of flaunting one's wealth, limited dental knowledge, and an attempt to hide an association with death found in the teeth. As with them being one of the only exposed parts of the skeleton, they were often seen as a reminder of death itself, so to hide it was an attractive feature. Though this process being connected to higher class individuals would eventually result in it being used during the Sengoku period, as because black teeth were associated with people of high class or power, they were also connected to high class warriors, and when clans would raid a castle, all the beheaded samurai would have their teeth blackened in order to increase the amount of glory or praise one would gain from claiming said kill. Jogo's blackened teeth likely stems from the latter, being a sign of not only his age, but his power as well. But he also suffered a similar fate to these samurai. He just got better afterwards. I also believe that other elements of Jogo's design may have been inspired by one of Akatame's biggest creative inspirations, this being Yu Yu Hakusho and Bleach. With the Bleach connection, you specifically have the 12th Division Captain of Mayori Korosuchi, which is a character that has a lot of similar features and highlights to their design, but this is slightly based on the fact that Korosuchi is one of Akatame's personal favorite characters and personal favorite designs from Bleach in general, being the character that they chose to draw during their interview with with Kubo himself. The other major inspiration I felt for his character was something you might not see initially from his visuals, but I believe he takes inspiration from Kazuma Kuwabara from Yu Yu Hakusho, as not only does Akatame pull from Togashi's work a lot in the past, but Jogo has been depicted with an honest-hearted delinquent-like personality similar to that of Kuwabara's own. The difference being, Jogo's loyalty lies with cursed spirits, so his cruelty towards humans could make him come off as a lot less honorable than you might first think. Though, the anime has taken taken a more direct approach with this, with him literally being represented as a good-hearted delinquent in the Juju Strolls, with him burning down Hanami's flower bed without telling her that he did so to create more nutrient-rich soil to grow new crops, which honestly is a rather beautiful summary of his character, but I'll get more into that later into the video. Though, speaking of the anime, he also directly shares a voice with Kuwabara in the Japanese dub of Jujutsu Kaisen, this being Shigeru Chiba, a personal favorite of Akatame's and one that they specifically requested for Jogo voice during the anime's production. Though, while Jogo may lack a similar ability to Kuwabara's own spirit sword technique, as Akatame clearly wanted to save that ability for a different character down the line, Jogo's own curse technique is quite powerful in its own right, so let's discuss it. Now, Jogo's technique, like other disaster curses, doesn't actually have an official name, with the guidebook and fanbook calling it simply Jogo's Technique. Thus, it had to be given a title by fans, this being Disaster Flame. Now, how Disaster flame functions is a lot like advanced pyrokinesis, which draws a lot of its strength from humanity's collective fears, hatred, and grief-stricken feelings towards volcanoes, or maybe even just fire as a whole. And because of the sheer abundance of this source, it has gifted Jogo with a variety of options when using his innate curse technique. From being able to casually generate heat and fire out of thin air to manipulating his flame's heat individually, Jogo has absolute mastery over fire. He also can use this technique to create miniature curse energy volcanoes on any surface he wishes, no matter how impossible it may be for them to be there. And these magma fill craters can also be erupted on command by Jogo, allowing him to get the jump on someone who might not notice, or nail down a quicker opponent. Though, due to the nature and how they grow anywhere, and only match visually with a volcano loosely, the volcanoes that Jogo creates actually remind me a bit more of barnacles, and could be a direct reference to the 
Japanese volcano barnacle, which is a specific species of the tetraclita that is found in the eastern region of the world, which not only resembles Jogo's creation, and could also work as a connection between Jogo and Dagon, the more ocean-based natural disaster curse. Though these abilities are just his raw, innate curse technique in action, as Jogo still has a few specialized curse techniques up his sleeve that he's honed through his natural capabilities and years of practice. And throughout the series, we've seen him be able to demonstrate a technique of every type and level of difficulty. So let's start first with the first one that we see named, the Ember Insects, in which Jogo spawns a large curse energy creature from the cavity in his head, which resembles a mixture of volcanic rock and a cicada. These creatures are equipped with a large stone proboscis and seemingly function similar to that of a Shikigami. As well, their purpose is to impale their targets and then release a powerful sonic blast that causes them to explode with the force of a volcanic eruption, vaporizing their target while destroying themselves. Now, while their design looks very similar to me, I couldn't really find any specific inspiration for them, outside of the fact that large insects like this do like more warmer climates, though I will say their function does remind me a good bit of Karasu's ability from Yu Yu Hakusho, specifically his trace eye bombs. Then following this, we see Jogo's mastery over curse energy with the fact that one of his named abilities is a maximum technique, which as the name implies, is the maximum potential of the curse technique given form. These techniques are on par with, if not greater, than domain expansions, and the maximum for Jogo Jogo's curse technique is simply called Meteor, in which Jogo creates some sort of massive attractive force that draws in debris from around the area to become a massive flaming meteor-like structure in which he drops on his targets from above crashing with enough force to devastate multiple city blocks. And the power of Meteor is actually pretty commendable, as Sukuna himself believes that if it hit, it would have harmed him. Now, the move itself seems to be inspired by a number of things. First, of course, literal meteors, as due to the historical connection to extinction and destruction, they work very well with Jogo's own character. Though, I think its role as Jogo's peak technique could be a reference to the Final Fantasy franchise and the use of Meteor there, as oftentimes it is depicted as the peak or pinnacle of black magic or some sort of cataclysmic force in its story that is a major event. From Tella, the hardest black mage in the franchise's biggest moment in Final Fantasy IV, to Meteor Fall in Final Fantasy VII, Meteor has acted as one of, if not the series' ultimate move, before Ultima was invented. And Akatame hasn't been too shy in referencing video games before in the past. Then finally, Jogo's mastery of his curse technique has also allowed him to create his own domain expansion, which, funny enough, unlike his curse technique, actually does have a name of its own. This being Coffin of the Iron Mountain, or Gaken Techisen, which when used covers the area in a projected recreation of an active erupting volcano, with the land around it cracking and spitting up lava. The heat of this domain is so intense that Jogo claims that the average sorcerer would be instantly cooked alive by merely entering the domain, let alone be struck by one of its guaranteed hit elements, which takes the form of a molten ball of magma, similar in design to that of his maximum meteor. Now, the name of this technique is actually rather interesting, as the first portion is comprised of the characters which pretty directly translate to coffin or casket, likely denoting the sealing nature of a domain. While the Techisen portion of the name connects Next back to a rather common theme used throughout curse technique inspirations, this being Hinduism and Buddhism, with the name being directly taken from one of the sacred mountains surrounding the world mountain, Sumiru, and one of the Buddhists' understanding of the world. This mountain in specific is Tenchisen, which is the final set of mountain ranges which wrap around the entire understood world and is comprised of a hardened iron. Within this Buddhist understanding of these mountains, the Techisen also possesses some sort of connection to the many hell realms of Buddhism known as the Naraka, which include even the lowest of the burning hells, Avicii, with them being located within the crevices of the mountain wall, which with this understood, Jogo's domain isn't simply that he is taking you to an active volcano. He is literally trapping you within a seemingly endless hell inside 
inside a blazing iron coffin. As well, this isn't the only connection to Buddhism within this technique's design, as the hand science or mudra that he uses to generate this domain actually has a history of its own, as the hand sign is greatly associated with Daikokuten, or more specifically, Mahakala or Makakara in Japanese. They are a deity within the Buddhist belief based on the wrathful manifestation of the Buddha, and is directly inspired by the Hindu deity known as Shiva, with the origins of Makakara depicting them as an extremely powerful and viciously wrathful being, given the title of the Great Black One or the Great Death. They are also referred to as an ultimate destroyer of all things, which of course, all of these elements match up very well with Jogo's own nature as a cursed spirit, a being of wanted destruction. Jogo uses his power as he pleases and destroys anything and everything in his wake. As well, his volcano and lava theming plays very well with the ideas of being one of nature's most powerful forces of raw destruction. Though while Mahakala was once known as a horrid demon and destroyer, once they reached Japan through the Tendai sect of Buddhism, they were given a complete legend makeover. Shaving off a lot of the edges, Mahakala, the Great Destroyer, became Daiko Kuten, the large, jolly, and overall positive figure associated with things like good fortune, wealth, sex, and war. And as this deity's legend spread across the country, soon enough Daiko Kuten would eventually have their identity fused together with one of the Shinto gods, Okuni Nushi, which is the father god of the previously mentioned Konohanasakiya, which ties Jogo all the way back to Mount Fuji yet again. As well, the changes of Daiko Kuten's persona is greatly similar to the dual nature of volcanoes and lava that Jogo also represents. As symbolically, volcanoes have always been known as great destroyers and creators, with the same lava that flows from their crevices being able to both burn and destroy a town, the same way they can leave behind mineral-rich soil to help create some of the most naturally prosperous land. And the same magma which bubbles up and explodes in an eruption can also slowly build up over the years into newly developing land. These elements are represented within Jogo and his own motivation innovations with his willingness to destroy the world of humans in order to bring in an era of curses. As Jogo believes that cursed spirits are the truest form of humans, as cursed spirits are the embodiment of our raw emotions, they hide nothing about their desires and are essentially Carl Jung's concept of the shadow. As the shadow self is an aspect of our unconscious personality that we do not wish to address in our daily lives, one which eventually ends up being projected outwards onto the world in the form of Carl Jung's archetypes, which work in line with the collective unconscious. This process is actually rather similar to the basic understanding of how cursed spirits are created within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. As well, the archetypes of Jung's work come in many different forms, some which relate very well to Jogo, but one specifically that I feel is the major source of inspiration for him draws from the God archetype, which Jung used to analyze the many legends and mythos from all across culture, where people from many different walks of life end up deifying the same natural forces. Like for example, volcanoes, with even the very word for volcano coming from Volcanus, the Roman god of fire. Jogo is an embodiment of these feelings. He is, from a human perspective, a living god, which is demonstrated quite well not only in his ability to use domain amplification, but also in how quickly he's able to dispatch three powerful sorcerers during the Shibuya incident, killing the head of the Zenin clan, dealing a critical wound to Nanami, and Maki only survived her encounters due to her unique heavenly restricted body. Though, unfortunately for Jogo, those with the power of gods tend to end up getting targeted by those who stand above said gods, which is why most most of his fights end up the way they do. Though, this isn't entirely a bad thing, as while his fight against Gojo was a complete blowout, with Gojo not only telling him that he was weak, but demonstrating the difference in their powers quite clearly, it was ultimately a major moment for Jogo's character, forcing him to reevaluate his ideals and draw on the strength of his allies, as well as pray for the strength of the King of Curses, even being so committed to his cause that he
he would willingly give his life for his future ideals, saying directly that it doesn't have to be him smiling in the end as long as curses come out on top. Which is why he's even willing to take on such suicidal tasks like awakening Sukuna to request his assistance, which eventually forces him into a final stand against the said King of Curses, where if he was able to land a single hit on Sukuna, then the King of Curses may actually humor his idea of working with them. And while Jogo spent most of the fight cursing the gap between their power, he did end up giving Sukuna everything he possibly could, until the disaster curse of fire succumbed to the flames of the disgraced one, returning to the void of the collective unconscious. Though, in his final parting moments, Sukuna put into the words the true reason why he lost this match, and the answer is actually rather similar to the explanation of power level in my absolute favorite series, Shaman King. This being that numbers are the problem. While not always literally numbers, when someone is shown the numbers, or shown the odds of their chances to succeed, they tend to set limits around those numbers. Jogo's conversation with Kenjaku at the start of the series on his own strength was sadly his own coffin, as he was given a hard number on his power and it infected his thoughts, so much so that throughout his fights he would often mention his level difference between his opponents. Specifically with Sukuna, he mentioned it multiple times, with the most standout of them being the scene where Sukuna himself asks Jogo why he didn't use his domain, and Jogo's answer was he simply would lose a battle of domains with Sukuna so there was no point of trying. This defeatist mindset unknowingly created a limitation around Jogo. He accepted the numbers and played to their tunes, without ever trying anything risky and evolving from it. And it is that type of mentality that separates those with power from the powerful. Though, it is also the same level of thinking that makes Jogo exactly what he wanted to be, a true human. From his loyalty to a cause, his love of his fellow curses, and his desire for a better world, to a cursed spirit, he'd be rather heroic. And while this portion of Jogo's character might seem disgusting to Sukuna, he still saw him as someone worthy of respect, saying so openly, which is an honor that he's only ever shown to one other individual. Jogo is a character who really grows on you throughout the series. His confidence in his own abilities, as well as his true dedication to his cause, is something rather commendable for an antagonistic character. And this may be because Akatame wanted to make a character that felt special in this way to honor one of his favorite voice actors. As in that same Kobayashi interview, Akatame revealed that when he learned Chibe had been picked for the role, he had just begun to write Jogo's final battle. And thus, the final scene with Jogo was done in a specific way to give Chibe something amazing to work with. As well, the final line between the two is seemingly pulled from their own history with manga, with Sukuna telling Jogo that he is strong is very similar to the first editor Akatame ever had telling them that they have talent. Maybe that's why they're both a Cyclops. Though Jogo does have this personal charm to him that just makes him so entertaining to watch. He has such an interesting design, and his role in additional content for volume releases is just really fun. And while he's such a treat to watch, it's a real shame that he constantly ends up in such bad matchups for him, which make him look a lot weaker than he is. It's become such a trend that even his own voice actor has commented on it in an interview alongside Sukuna's own voice, mentioning that, albeit in a joking lighthearted tone, that it's annoying that Jogo keeps getting thrown into the ring with characters who have cheat level powers. Cause Jogo himself is still very strong, and his strength doesn't even go unrecognized in the series itself, as Kenjaku did plan to try to capture Jogo alongside Mahito at the end of Shibuya, and even regrets not being able to. As well, he's left a permanent impact on one of the best characters in the series, period, that being in the form of Maki's burn scars. And hopefully, due to the nature of cursed spirits, his death won't be the end of his being, as while Jogo may have perished during the story, a new disaster curse of fire will eventually awaken in the future, one that will carry on its previous life's legacy, and hopefully reunite with those he came to value as a family. Because that is his true strength. He is a being of destruction the same way he is of creation. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash medinotthebadguy. Every little bit helps keep this channel flowing as smoothly as it does, and if you want to hone your own skills and become a disaster curse-like threat, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at, by Shimonetta.com.